Welcome to tonight's college football playoff edition uh, when it comes to the ACC. This is to the Clown Hour podcast. I'm Scott Burks. Please to the check me out www.theclowntimes.net. That's Clown Spell Vacation. You see on this hat here. And speaking of which, you can get the merch at cafepress.com. Search for the Clown Times Watch. You find the gear there as well, whether it's hats, t shirts, sweatshirts, mouse pad, you name it, I got it. So, anyway, just go to cafepress.com, search for the Clown Times Sports. The link will be in the description underneath this video. You find it there as well. Also, I'm on Facebook, so we're on laptop, desktop, mainframe, <laughs> wherever you are, wherever you may be. Just type in the Clown Times and search window in Facebook. You'll find me there as well. And last but not least, please continue to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I have a feeling that some of you may disagree with what I and my or and or my guests will have to say about all things that you see tonight. So either way, just please respond. I'll, please comment. I'll respond back in kind. And either way, you'll be glad you did, especially if you subscribe, and I'll be glad you did. Okay, so I mentioned ACC. You know who this gentleman is um, pretty much by now. He is the founder and one of the, co -found, one of the co founders and writers of. All sports discussion, ACC sports blog, one of my favorite dudes to wrap with in terms of college football and basketball. Jeff Fan is back in the house. How you doing, sir? Hey there, Scott. Glad to be back on. Right on, right on, man. Hey, man. Let's just get to it, man. Uh, let's just start with what happened this past weekend in college football. Uh, since we're coming down the stretch of the college football playoff, I mean, we'll get to the rankings momentarily, but, you know, I think with all the things that happened from NC State crapping the bed almost, almost seemingly for good with them getting pasted at, at, at Louisville, mm -hmm. that's Louisville without uh, Malik Cunningham, by the way. Right, right. Um, in Carolina, which it delights me when they lose, but for them to be spotted a 17 to nothing lead at home against Georgia Tech and a fighting Coach Mays, <laughs> You know, the the back they, they they won their fifth game of the year, 21 to 17. Um, to me, that does the most damage to the ACC's playoff chances because, and, and we'll get to it momentarily. I think that Carolina would be ranked much higher than it would be tonight, and they'll be in the position with the conference be in a position where possibly either team, if obviously provide well, Clemson and Carolina would win out, which they should. Um, then they would be whoever would win that game would have a great chance. Would have had a great chance to college for a playoff. But as it stands, it is what it is. So as far as your Georgia Tech, your, your beloved Yellow Jackets, I know you're still yeah. doing the Congo line to Jeff Collins' clown ass getting fired, rightfully so. Yeah. Um, Yay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you and the rest of the rambling recognition. So Carolina's downfall. Was it as much as Carolina possibly looking ahead to NC State, the rivalry game, and the conference championship game? Or was it Georgia Tech just battling back and just making the proper adjustment in the second half and just being better when it counted? Yeah, I think I think it was a combination of both of both things. Once Carolina went up 17 to 0, I mean you you thought the game what was was over. I mean you, yes. I don't think there's anybody that thought that Georgia Tech was going to shut down Drake May and Josh Downs and that offense in the second half. Right. And, you know, I, th I think North Carolina just put it kind of in cruise control. And, you know, Georgia Tech gets with, you know, they get it to 17 14. Right. And you could see Georgia Tech on the sidelines. I mean, they were really into the game. Their body language was, was you know, much better than you would think for a team that you know, really probably wasn't playing for anything, you know, other than, you know, maybe Coach Key went getting the uh, head coaching job, which I think, you know, he's really turning in that to, uh, you know, kind of galvanizes his team. And, I mean, they just played with more effort, with more intensity than, than North Carolina did in that second right. half in particular. Um, and and then that game was, was damaging in a lot of ways for North Carolina. Uh, I mean, it, it – up until that point, Drake May was in the discussion for the Heisman with a legitimate right. chance to, to win it. I mean, he was a top three candidate. Um, I mean, he can still get to New York City into the selection show, but I think he, he can't win it now. So he yeah. cost, they cost May the Heisman. Uh, they cost Mac Brown any chance at ACC Coach of the Year. Um, you know, he was, he was in the picture. He was in the mix with Mike Elko. Yeah. May, may not 
you know, may not have won it, but he was in the mix. That's probably out now of really having a chance at it. Um, they, like you said, they cost North Carolina any remote chance at the playoffs. Um, you know, they were still probably not going to make it. You know, we can all sure. say that, but you sure. know, they, they were, they could have got in the picture had they won out that's gone. And now with the, with the college football playoff rankings coming out tonight, if, if Clemson makes, does make the playoff, Florida state is ahead of North Carolina and it, it may have cost, um, you know, really damaged North Carolina shot at an orange bowl. So, I mean, it, that point. Georgia tech caused a lot of damage to North Carolina into the, to that game. So I think there was a combination of, of them getting up big North Carolina and, and just kind of putting it in cruise control and, and Georgia tech didn't to their credit, Brent key, you know, kept his team fired up. Um, you know, they were in that game with their third and fourth string quarterback and right. just came out with a great game plan against, um, you know, Drake may Keon white had three sacks in the game. And I mean, they, they got him into his worst game of the season. So, you know, hats off to Georgia tech and Brent key. And, you know, wow, that was a stunner. That was, that was definitely one of the, the biggest upsets in the ACC this season. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. And look, I hate, you know, I hate Carolina with yeah. a thousand sons, right? It's still funny to me that Georgia tech just continues to have their number, but yeah, beat them two years in a row now as a ranked uh, team. <laughs> How about that? Even with that clown show at head coach with Jeff Collins, they beat the <laughs> Yeah. Go figure that. But the thing is, man, is I'm an ACC guy through and through. And I was looking forward to the, 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 to the conference having the storyline heading to the conference championship game in two weeks. I was, yeah. I was really looking forward to that because I think NC State, I know it's a rivalry game this, this Friday, this coming Friday, um, you know, but I think, I think uh, NC State all but quit on, 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 uh, on Dave Dorn and, and the staff. And I'll get to that damn offensive coordinator in a minute. Um, but, you know, the thing is, is that I just, it's now it's like obviously comes to a bus. And even then, with how everything things shook out this past weekend, it looks more and more unlikely that Clemson will even get a sniff at it. Now, mind you, Saturday, we came close to seeing a lot of chaos, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we came close to TCU going down at Baylor, to Michigan inexplicably losing at home to Illinois. I think yeah. Michigan's overrated, but that's another story for another time. Yeah, um, Ill, Ill, the Illinois got hosed in that game. Yeah. You know, there was a pass interference. On, on Michigan, they got away with, I mean, uh, Brett Billima, you know, really got on on refs and, you know, in his post-game comments, and, and they got hosed in that game. They got robbed from from beating Michigan. Yeah, yeah. And, and they, they wish it a shame because Illinois played a hell of a game. Yep. Um, but it's going to be regret to pass up because I think Michigan will get the asses kicked in Columbus next week, this coming weekend. So it, it's a mood issue anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it really is. But I mean, in Georgia play getting taken down to the wire by Kentucky. So imagine if two of those, imagine if Michigan doesn't get the, the, the favorable host job. Imagine if TCU misses that field goal. Clemson would have been much higher. I think they're probably number five. Yeah. Um, pretty damn close to it. And if Carolina would have held on against Georgia Tech, they would have been top 10. So it would have been at least a storyline Hey, hell, out of way would have been a storyline because I think Carolina would be right almost at 10, even with the chaos that doesn't happen, right? So another year, another non-storyline in the ACC title game. Oh, my goodness, it is what it is. But we have to say, I guess we'll have to wait till next year. I mean, I, I think, though, that, you know, it, it, it is like you said, it's unlikely that, that Clemson can, can reach the playoffs but it's not as far fetched as it was a week ago. Right. Uh, Cause after tonight they were ranked eighth, which to me right. is basically they're, they're effectively seventh. Cause they're going to jump Alabama. Right. You know, Correct. if they went out, there's no question about that. Alabama, um, you know, it, it, it finished the year with Austin P and a bad Auburn team. So, you know, they can't pick up any resume points at all. Correct. So really Clemson is, is seventh. And, and actually they were aided by a, uh, you know, an unlikely ally, on Saturday with, with South Carolina basically eliminated Tennessee. That? Yeah, that? That, that came out of nowhere. So, yeah. 
you know, on the one hand, like you said, North Carolina losing, you know, uh, you know, hurts a, a little bit from a ranking perspective um, when they play in the ACC championship. Clemson, if they beat South Carolina, gains credibility with that win because they can just, Correct. you know, they can say, hey, you know, we just beat a team that, you know, absolutely thrashed the number five team in the country at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, they, they need a little bit of help. But if you look at it and they're seven, they got to jump over two more teams. Um, it's only going to take a USC loss. And I do think, like you said, Ohio State will beat Michigan. I do not think Michigan stays in the top four um, yeah. with a loss. Right. Um, they, they weren't dominant against Illinois. They have one decent win on their entire schedule. Penn they're State. Out of com- Penn State. And yeah. their, their out-of-conference schedule was total trash. Their schedule has right. been trash. Um, so I don't see any way Michigan stays in the top four because, you, you know, you're going to end the season – with a with a game that you should have lost and a game you did lose, so that's not a playoff resume to me. Correct. Um, so they really what they got to have happen, I think, is have USC lose either to Notre Dame or in the Pac-12 championship, or have TCU lose in the Big 12 championship or against Iowa State. I think right. Any of those scenario happen, I think Clemson can has a chance to sneak in there. Of course. Uh, Georgia needs to beat LSU. I think they will. That would be, I they think will. they will. They'll be, they they'll will. be LSU. They'll be LSU. Yeah. I, I feel confident they're going to beat LSU, but that, mm-hmm. that would really muddy the waters too if LSU were to somehow beat um, yeah. Georgia. But I don't <laughs> think that's going to happen. So Clemson yeah. needs needs some help. It's right. still it's still in the unlikely phase. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's not. There's a path. There's a there's a path, and they're they're in the discussion on right. the outside looking in, but. There is there is a path, so they just got to take care of business and see what happens. They have one job. Went they out. have one job, exactly. Went just went out, just went out, and just let everything take care of itself. Says take care of itself. Excuse me. Now speaking of USC, how about Notre Dame possibly being the ACC champ, under the ACC champ this year? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you can't argue with it. They did, they they did, they did beat Clemson. They beat North Carolina. Yeah, so, and beat them down, both of them. Yeah, I mean the, the the North Carolina game was a little bit closer cosmetically, but I mean they dominated that game and right. Um, especially that was a that was a weird time because that early in the years when North Car or Notre Dame was losing to Stanford and Marshall and yes, and uh, they still took care of business against uh, North Carolina even at that time of the year. The the Clemson right. game was just a debacle. Uh, right by the Clemson coaching staff. And I mean, that Notre Dame team, I mean, they're, they're certainly better than they were early in the year. And, Mm -hmm. you know, now Clemson is forced to really like, Hey, Notre Dame, you know, can you, can you take care of USC? Yeah. (laughs) And that's going to be a a really interesting matchup because I think Notre Dame is much better. Yeah. Um, They play defense. Yeah. yeah, They play defense, Mm -hmm. but I I think USC has the player that's going to win the Heisman trophy with Caleb Williams. Yeah. Um, So, that's going to be a really interesting game. I, I don't think USC has seen a line like the size of the line like like, like Notre Dame's. I no. mean, they 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 take advantage of competition and the Pac-12 competition that do that does not have strength in the interior lines on both sides of, of the of the of, of, of the ball. They'll see that with the Irish. So exactly. that's going to be one hell. Of, that's going to be one hell of a game. I and, think, yeah. And and, and uh, I was going to say too that you know. Keep in mind, this same Notre Dame team came this close to losing the cow early in the season, if you could believe that. So, yeah. I mean, props to Marcus Freeman. I'm happy for the brother. I mean, they were going to run. They were all but trying to – were all trying to – to, they were all but rather trying to run this dude out of town after they lost to Marshall. Right, right. <laughs> you know what he, I'm he's really turned it around. Yeah. And, and, and I think – Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think USC is 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 a similar team to North Carolina, a, mm-hmm. a little bit better, a better version of North Carolina, but not by that much. I mean, they're right. they're great at quarterback. They got great receivers. Mm-hmm. You know, Caleb Williams, Drake May, Josh Downs, Jordan Addison, right. but they're both defensively, you know, leave a lot to be desired. And I think Notre Dame can do a lot of the things they did against North Carolina against USC. Um, 
it doesn't matter if if they can outscore them, but uh, Notre Dame should be able to control the line of scrimmage in that game. Yeah, and I think they will. Um, yeah, and one more tidbit on Notre Dame 2022 versus Notre Dame. Um, they've the average margin of victory against ACC competition this year, and this is considered a down year for Notre Dame because they don't have a, a, a really counter quarterback in place and everything else. They The average margin of victory is over double digits in ACC yep. competition. That's just crazy to me. So, hey, if uh, if Jim Phillips were to have somehow sweet talk Notre Dame to join it, his, he, he could use the uh, – the, the 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 carrot as being hey you'll you you'll get to dominate possibly dominate the, <laughs> yeah. the conference and get an auto all, all but an all but assured of an automatic qualifier for winning the conference especially once it expands to 12 teams yeah so, whatever hey. he can use <laughs> whatever he can, whatever <laughs> carrot he can dangle out there <laughs> yeah yeah i don't say i personally see no other journey anytime soon they still got access but it, it'd, yeah. be, it'd be needed to get okay um so, yeah, so we might as well talk about the college football player. We might as well touch on it right quick before we move to basketball. I don't have a problem with any of the rankings. I think that the ACC teams are ranked just right, um, given what's happened. I mean, hell, Florida State at 16, they have a shot at nine wins, man, which is a hell of a job done by, by the head coach, man. I mean, it's, 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 I mean, props to him. Props to him for, yeah. for pulling this out. They, they should be Florida down this weekend um, and, and everything else. So they have an outside – they have a shot at a New Year's Six Bowl. Really? Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not so sure if, if Florida State may not be the best team in the ACC at the moment. Yeah. I mean, I know they've lost three times, but, I mean, during the course of the second half of the year, that they've, they've dominated opponents. Yeah. And I, I think they're going to dominate Florida. That game's in Tallahassee. Yeah. And, and you know they go nine and three. They're going to be in the top fifteen, and you know, rooting for for Clemson to get in the playoffs so they can get that Orange Bowl bid. I mean, they're uh, Florida State. This is what would be great in a twelve team playoff. You mm-hmm. know, Florida State would have a shot at being ranked number twelve, and nobody would want to face them right now. That's right. You know, as as much as Notre Dame has turned it around, I mean, Florida State has done is has had their own turnaround. I mean, we saw flashes. Earlier in the year, I mean, you, we knew that when they beat LSU, there was something about this team that could be pretty good. Yeah. And then early in the year, you know, they they would show flashes, but now they're not just showing flashes of being a, a really quality team. They're putting it all together and just mowing down people. And uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they beat Florida by a couple touchdowns. I mean, that, yeah. that feels like a like a thirty-one ten type game coming Friday. And um, you know, that'll kind of set the ACC, SEC rivalry weekend up right. Mm-hmm. And you also think, uh, look at Louisville. They're ranked 25th. Yep. And I think the, I think part of it's the committee trying to do Clemson a little bit of a solid uh, because they, have, yep. I, think, I think they want to see, I think part of the part of them want to see Clemson in there as well, or at least have a, like an argument because let's just be real. Clemson's out of cover schedule outside of maybe South Carolina has been pretty suspect. And while, while the, the Atlanta division competition has been pretty good, I, I have no pause with what's, what, what, with, with the Atlanta division. Um, so I think that's them were rewarding Clemson and, and Lewis, speaking of Louisville, uh, how about them? The fighting Satterfield, right? I mean, there were a team that were on the, was on the verge if, we, we, if the reports were true a fire in Satterfield. And look how they've done it. They've turned it around. They were they were bad, they were like a bad fourth quarter against Boston College away from being eight and three right now. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. I mean, you know, six weeks ago, they were getting ready to fire Scott Satterfield. And if he beats Kentucky and they go eight and four, I mean he's looking at a top twenty five season with a good recruiting class coming in i mean yes, it just Lord. oh my god it's crazy recruiting class dude. i mean they they the whole outlook of that entire program can change in six weeks right Espe- especially if he can knock off um you know offensively challenged kentucky team um <laughs> you know i know they got levi at quarterback who somehow keeps getting you know ranked as like the top two one or two or two or three quarterbacks in the in the country and every time i watch him play he's struggling and <laughs> right but uh 
you know, that that's a real opportunity for Louisville uh, to really make something of, of their season if they could go uh, and knock off Kentucky. They're playing. They're playing. They're, that game's being played in Lexington, right? I think. I, uh, I think it's in Lexington. I, I think, think it is too. I think it is too. I'm. I, let me click on this. I'm looking right at the Cosmo playoff ranks. I can click on this to find out. Um, yep, is that Kentucky at, on at the ACC SEC Network at 3 p.m. So that they Louisville. Imagine this. Louisville has a shot of finishing eight and four. Florida State has a shot of finishing nine and three. And meanwhile, the team that everyone thought would challenge Clemson, Marvel of and Wolfpack, will probably finish the season at seven and five. This was yeah. supposed to have been Dave Doran, head coach Dave Doran's best squad he had a row. I know injuries happen. They don't have Devin, Devin Leary. But damn it, you're better than seven and five. You're de- well, well, right now, seven and four. You're better than seven and four. I mean, you, they lost in Boston College at home. Right. Yeah, that, that was absolutely unacceptable that under was any circumstances. Totally unacceptable. totally unacceptable. I can understand losing that Louisville. Louisville is actually very talented. I, yep. I get that. But losing at home to Boston College was inexcusable. And this is the same dude, talking about Dave Dorn, who almost came this close to losing that East Carolina game. I know that's a rivalry game, but they're better than East Carolina. They're much better than East Carolina on paper. And the fact is, man, look, I've been on the fire the Dave Doran bandwagon for a long time. You know this. Yeah. I'm not I'm not shy about that. I have not been shy about that. Now the offensive coordinator, I forget that fool's name. Oh, Don, Beck. Beck. Beck, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's gotta he, go. He's gotta go. He, he's gotta get the hell out of here. And I'll tell you what, it wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock me, given that this was Doran's best team he's had. To, they, they, they're probably staring at only seven, or only seven to five record at season's end when they had much higher expectations. It wouldn't shock me to see both those two clowns go. It wouldn't shock me. Now, I would say this. Dave Doran's a good dude. He's not a clown. He's actually a good dude on and off the field. I just, I just, it's just that he has a ceiling, right? He has a ceiling. And the, the way we finished this season with our best team he's had, I'm like, why stay with him at this point? Why stick with him? First, the top back has to definitely go. He should have been fired right after the Boston College game. Yeah. Because he has a game plan of let's not get the ball to our best. He has to get the hell on. Okay. But I don't know if we can get higher than what we can with Doran. And and I'm just being serious. I'm I'm being logical and serious as I possibly can right now. I mean, this this was the year. I mean, they returned so much and uh and and you know, some people could point to, you know, Devin Leary getting hurt, but the offense was struggling before Devin Leary. That's correct. You know, what he was playing, the offense was didn't look right, and it was struggling, and something, you know, just didn't seem right with that with that team. I mean, especially, you know, they come out of the gate at East Carolina, they really look, they did not play well, and they very easily could have lost that game if that field goal goes. Mm-hmm. I mean, the game, they were about to lose you know, to East Carolina, you know, they get back and play up uh, pretty decently against Texas Tech, you know, and then they go into into Clemson. Uh, but, you know, that offense was struggling well before Devin Leary uh, got hurt. And, you know, like we talked about that Boston College loss. I mean, that 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 wasn't just a a, a bad Boston College team. I mean, they're, they're terrible this year. I mean, yeah. they they were getting mowed down by pretty much everyone uh, in the second half of the season. Um yeah, yeah, you, you, I think that's a good point. You got to wonder if, if, if last year, you know, was a ceiling for Dave Dorn. If they're ever going to get the ten wins under, under, under him, you know, are they going to? They're going to always be, you know, bowl capable, seven wins, eight wins. Right. But can he get you further than that? He's been there a long time. I mean, I, I, I don't know if you can fire him this year, but he's got to make a move at offensive coordinator, and then. You know, if it doesn't happen, you know, maybe he's peaked out. Maybe he's peaked out at there at Raleigh. Yeah, I think he has. I think he's his head hit the ceiling. I think I I think the program has hit the ceiling underneath him. Again, good guy on off the field. Dave Dorn. Good, good, very good dude. It's just that it's time. We we have it's just think we have the resources to think big. We do. So 
it's if we want to be that squad in football, at least to be watched, our defense is great. We wasted a great defensive effort this year. And I, I just think I know Dorm recruits on a decent level, but I think we've hit our ceiling with this dude. And I think it's time for whoever the hell or Boo Corgan, the our um our our, our esteemed A D. I think he needs to start thinking big and just take a swing. He has to. Because again, with the squad that we had on paper to start the year, 10, nine wins would have been a slight disappointment. Seven wins is just an out downright, downright disappointment. So let, let me ask you a question as an NC State right. guy. Uh -huh. if, what if you knock off North Carolina this weekend? See, that's the T. See, I, the only thing about that is I would love because those yep. damn Tar Heels will lose to my beloved Woodpack, but it's a tease. Yeah. Because we're gonna be thinking, oh, what if? What, what about what we we'll carry this into next year? It's gonna be the same tease we had last season, right? When we stole a game from the Tar Heels <laughs> and came this close to winning 10 games if UCLA would have followed through with playing us in the Sun Bowl. If they didn't get uh COVID break, break with COVID. I mean, excuse me, the tiger the tiger bowl. So <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I lose track. It's too many damn balls this way. But the point is, is that I think this will be another tease. Mm. So I think it's just if they're able, if we're able to swing, come up with big, come up with a big swing and get a home run higher. I think it's time to move on from Dave Dorn. I, I think we've reached our ceiling with this dude, and uh, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, before we get to college basketball to close the show. Let me give a shout out to my sponsors at BetUS.com. So listen up, sports betters. Your favorite sports book, BetUS.com, is back for our 20th year of NFL action. So with the industry's biggest sign-up bonus of up to 200%, BetUS offers our members the opportunity to cash in for all your favorite sports, including NFL, UFC, MLB, and college football. And if you're looking for live in-game betting, incredible odds with daily odds, boosters, props, and parlays, you got them. And how about fast payouts and exceptional one-on-one -on -one service, customer service? We got that too. So long to BETUS.com or call 800-792-387. That's 800-79-BETUS. You can use the promo code TKT for the clown times to get the hookup as well. BETUS.com where the game begins. All right, man, we'll close out the show. We're talking about the ACC basketball. We didn't have a chance to do our preview because everything happened so quickly. But we're still in the infancy of the college basketball season anyway. But just looking at it, man, outside of a few teams, outside of Carolina, Virginia, where I think Virginia's going to be very good. Uh, Duke, maybe Wake, Miami, Wake, and, and Virginia Tech, and possibly Notre Dame. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, dude. Florida State getting manhandled by Florida and out of conference. Louisville being 0-5. And getting crushed today uh, by Texas Tech. Oh my God, Pitt getting lambasted by a, 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 by a West Virginia team, which who I don't think is all that good. Boston College losing to Stetson last night. Georgia Tech blowing the blowing the game uh, the other night. I don't know, man. This is I haven't seen the ACC in week so weak in basketball in back to back years is very long time, and we may get that this year. I, I don't know yeah. what, what they're making of Yeah, should we should we start with the with let, let's start with the bad news first, and then we'll, we'll end <laughs> on a high note. We'll, we'll we'll start on a high note. Yeah, the right. the, the the bottom of the ACC. Uh, I mean, there's just no other way to describe it other than it's absolutely atrocious. Right. Um, I mean, there are some really really bad teams in the, in the ACC, and and the problem. Is they're doing so poorly out of conference, it's, it's going to drag down the NCAA, um, you know, possible teams. You know, you, you get a bubble team when it comes down to, uh, you know, March, and, you know, wins against Louisville and Pitt and Boston College are not going to count for anything because mm -hmm. their computer numbers are going to be so bad. Louisville is absolutely horrible. They, they might turn out to be one of the worst ACC teams we've ever seen. I mean, they're 0-5, and, and they can easily start the year like 1-9 and 9 or something like that. 
Right. Um, Florida State, I, I think it's going to be better, but the problem mm -hmm. is they've taken so many early season losses um, that they're, you know, they're going to they're going to drag down the ACC as well. And you mentioned it, um, you know, Boston College, terrible. Pitts, terrible. Uh, we already talked about Louisville. Uh, Syracuse took a loss to Colgate um, a yes. couple weeks ago. I mean, Jesus Christ, yeah. Just, just the <laughs> losses just keep adding up. I mean, Clemson, you know, goes down to Columbia and loses to a terrible South Carolina team. I mean, and that's one of the good losses, you know. Yeah. And, right. and like you, you talked about Georgia Tech. I mean, yesterday they're leading, you know, a good majority of the final ten minutes against a Utah team that most people had near the bottom of the Pac-12, and that that's one of the good losses. Yeah. Um, that that's that's the bad news. Um, the good news is. Even though it, it is another year of following last year where the ACC is down, uh, the, the top of the ACC is much better this year than it was yes, last it year. Especially and, Virginia. Yeah, oh, my gosh. Yeah, it, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Virginia coming out, um, you know, knocking off Baylor and then beating a really good Illinois team. I mean, mm -hmm. that – I don't know. I don't know. There's there's not another team in the country that's got a better pair of wins – than that, and then right now, they are carrying the ACC with what Tony Bennett has done. Uh, last yeah. year, you know, Duke was was the only, you know, legitimate top fifteen team in the ACC. You know, of course, they played very well in the tournament, uh, but going into the tournament, Duke was your was your only really quality looking team right. that went into to March. But this year, you know, North Carolina is going to be there. We hadn't seen them really turn it on, but we know how talented they are. Yeah, they got everybody so, back too. They got so. they got everybody Baycock back, and, yeah. and you know they're going to get it together. They can score a ton. We know Duke is very talented. Um, yeah, you know they they lost to Kansas, but they proved that you know they're they're a legitimate top, you know, ten team. They were right, right. there with Kansas in that game, and then of course we've already talked about um, Virginia with those two great wins uh, this past weekend. With, you know, following on the footsteps of that the tragic week in, in Virginia. So yes. it's a big moment for their athletic program. Right. So we, we've got the ACC, you know, at the bottom as being as bad as we could ever see it. <laughs> and, then, and, and then on the top, they got three of the top 10 teams in the country. Correct. And, and, and I think, you know, Virginia Tech is top 25 caliber. I know they I lost do. at College of Charleston, but they beat a good Penn State yeah, they did. down there. And, um, you know they're, they're gonna that's a tournament quality team uh miami uh i, th I think they got a win over over providence struggled providence, against yep. struggled against maryland uh but i think maryland's gonna be very good i think you'll see miami be there in the end and then like you said there's the the notre dames and the um uh notre dames and the nc states and the wake forest that are kind of in the middle but yeah. i mean i think there's there's three you know number one, number two seed caliber teams in the ACC. Right. And I think you've got a couple more, two or three more NCAA caliber teams. So it's, it's really weird this year in the ACC because the conference is not down as a whole. It's just really bad at the bottom, really, really good at the top. Yes. And and a kind of a questionable middle. And, right. and I, I still think you can see, you know, five, uh, well, you get at least five, but you could have as many as six or seven NCAA teams by the by the end of the year uh, it's just really what what the top of the ACC do you know what I said this on Twitter what the top of the ACC is going to do to the bottom of the ACC this year yeah. should be banned in most countries it's, <laughs> it's, when North Carolina gets hold of, of Boston College or, oh or my God. Virginia plays Louisville uh, it's, it's going to be really really ugly <laughs> you know what it's funny I'm on Cincinnati where I'm at right now is only an hour and a half north of Louisville it's a yep. quick drive, easy drive down 70, Highway 71. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know if I should see. Me, I think me watching that game, any of Louisville's games in person would be a crime beyond, like, like a crime to all humanity because they're terrible. They are just terrible. And Florida yep. State is, is and as much as I, I like the head coach, they're terrible. I, I know they got some players out right now, but Jesus Christ, they don't look good at all. No, it's just, it's, no. Just, it's, it's, it's terrible. We will see, man, but I don't, I don't have my hopes too high for the 
league as far as as a whole. Now, yeah. again, the top, great. The middle has to determine how strong this conference is going to be throughout the season. The bottom four, five, or six, yeah, we don't need them. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. That, that, that's what we're going to find out. Is, is, is this going to be a five-bid league or a seven-bid league? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the bottom is, is too bad to have one of those vintage <laughs> years where, where the ACC is looking at nine or ten yeah. bids. But, yeah, the bottom's going to determine if it's five or seven. Maybe there could be a, an, an eighth team. It mm-hmm. all depends on those middle teams, the NC States, the Wake Forest, the Notre Dames. Um, I think Syracuse has got a pre-conference tournament tonight, right. um, championship game against uh, St. John's. And, you know, you win one of those preseason tournaments, you can kind of make up for that Colgate loss. So, you know, we, we'll yes. see if they can kind of start riding the ship. And we play we play Kansas tomorrow. That's a big opportunity. Noon. Big Huge opportunity. opportunity. Huge yep. opportunity for us. So we'll we'll see about that. All right, dude. Um, where can people find you on social media and your, and your website as well? Yeah, you can find me at Talking ACC Sports. Um, I'm, I'm usually tweeting about – you know, whatever ACC <laughs> football game is on and try to catch most of the basketball games. Um, also blogging at allsportsdiscussion.com and, and then our Sunday podcast with Hokey Smash underscore ASD that he usually joins, um, you know, on, on that show. So, you know, check us out. Yes, we will do. It's a great show. So ACC fans and college sports fans alike, check them out. They're very objective and very informative, especially all things, TV related, uh, and TV. Well, we'll get to that next time. We need to have time yeah. to get that to, 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 to that tonight. So great. All right, man. Thank you again. Thank, thank you for joining me, man. And please check him out. His great work. And thank you all for tuning in tonight's podcast. Please continue to check me out at www.contact.net merchandise at cafepress.com. Search for contact sports. I'm on Facebook as well. And last but not least, please continue to like comment share and subscribe you'd be glad you did and i'll be glad you did and please until next time please have a great thanksgiving weekend safe yep. travels and all that good stuff enjoy the football and everything else that comes with it take care peace out